equation, which is 1 over f is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. And so typically, you'll be given the focal length of the lens, or you'll know it, and you'll know the object distance, the distance of the object from the spherical mirror. And you can use that to determine where the image distance is going to be. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Leave a comment below to help grow the channel, and don't forget to smash the like button. I want to derive the relationship between the focal point and the radius of curvature for a spherical mirror. And so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to consider a parallel ray coming in some height h above the optic axis, getting a point x on the mirror. We know that it's going to reflect through the focus of the mirror, That's like so. Next, I want to consider a radial line from the radius of curvature point C to the point X. Now remember that this will, by definition, be normal to the surface of the, the circle, or the reflector here. And as such, by the law of reflection, it's going to bisect this angle here, right? So this would be the angle of incidence. I'm just going to draw that these are equal by the law of reflection. Okay, since these angles here and here are opposite interior angles, they are equal. And since this angle is also equal to this angle, that means that this side, FC, has the same length as FX. So I'll write that F x is equal to fc. Why is that? That's because the angle fxc is congruent to the angle fcx. Yeah. Therefore, fx is equal to fc. But notice that we could have chosen x to be any position. And so if we allow x to be p, so let x equal p, then what does that mean? That means that fc is equal to fp. And if we define this distance to be the focal length, that's a lowercase f, then what do we find? Well, that means that fc plus fp will be equal to f plus f, which is equal to 2f. But this distance, fc, plus Fp is just the radius of curvature R. And so we get that that is equal to 2F, which means, of course, that the focal length is equal to half of the radius of curvature. And that's that. Final lesson on uh, reflective geometrical optics and the law of reflection. We're going to talk about the lens equation for a spherical uh, mirror. So why, why do we call it a lens equation? Because there's a focusing that's going on here, right? Just to remind you, I have an object, right? height HO, we'll call that the object's height, and it's going to be at a distance from the pole, P, of, we'll call it DO, or object distance. What's going to happen here? Well, let's see where the image is going to form. Let's construct a parallel ray a ray parallel to the optic axis anyways, like so, and we know that's going to pass through the focus. Let's also consider a ray that passes, that reflects at the pole, 
And that, under the law of reflection, not the best drawn bisector there, canceling the optic axis again, about like that. Right, so this angle and this angle are the same uh, under the law of reflection. This point here will be the image plane, and I will get an object that has the image height, hi. And it will be a distance from the pole, di. So I'm going to label some points here. I'm going to call this point i1, and the bottom here i2. So what I'm looking for are some similar triangles. And so right off the top of my head, I see a triangle. Let's write it like this. Triangle O, I1, I2. From here to here to here. You see that triangle? It's got this angle theta r in it, O1, object 1, and O2, these two points here at the head and the tail of the object. <clears throat> so I'll have a triangle O, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be a P, that's why I'm confused. So P, O1, O2. Because these angles are the same, these triangles are similar. So I guess I should have drawn it like this, similar to P, O1, O2. And what does that tell us? That tells us that HI over HO, this distance over this distance, will be the same as the distance from P to O2, which is the object distance, D, oh sorry, HI over HO will be the same as the distance from P to I1, which we call D sub I, the image distance, over the object distance from P to O2, which is DO. Okay, well that's useful. But we need to find another triangle in here. And if we observe that this angle here is the same as this angle here, as they are opposite angles, and we note that this distance here is HO, approximately, right? So this is for rays that are very close to the optic axis so that the curvature here is not as extreme as I've drawn, so that we can approximate this little arc length section here as HO. So now we're going to consider the triangle F, I1, I2. So that is similar to, I need to label this point right here, which I'm going to just call it alpha, just because we need a name for it. This is similar to F alpha P. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that the distance HI over HO, the ratio of these two, this height to this height, is the ratio of this distance, which is the point I1 minus F, well really it's, it's DI minus the focal length, which I'll write in here, it's another distance that we needed, the focal length, F. So from this point I1 to the point F, that distance is DI minus F, DI minus F, over the distance F. So now I have two expressions for the ratio of the image height to the object height. I can set those equal to each other. And I would say that di over do is equal to di minus f divided by f. Now I can multiply both sides by f and also do to get that di times f is equal to di times do minus f times do. And now I'd like to divide everything. So I want to divide everything by f, di, do. And in doing so, when I divide di, f by f, di, do, 
the DI and the F cancel and left with just one over DO. And that's equal to, I can divide this term uh, by F DI DO, and it will only leave uh, F in the denominator. One over F minus the last term, F DO. If I divide that by F DI DO, I'm left with just one over DI. And if we rearrange that a little bit and solve for 1 over f, this gives us the lens equation, which is 1 over f is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. And so typically, you'll be given the focal length of the lens, or you'll know it, and you'll know the object distance, the distance of the object from the spherical mirror. And you can use that to determine where the image distance is going to be. However, I should point out that there's a sign convention that we use uh, that's a little bit strange. You have to consider the positive x direction to be in the direction of incident rays. So in this picture here, this would be the positive x direction, which means that all of these numbers here, DO and DI, would both be negative numbers. The positive numbers would be over here. This, of course, would be the positive. Above the optic axis would be a positive number, and below the optic axis would be a negative number, but we don't really need to use that. I think that's all that I want to say about the sign convention. It can be confusing, though. Uh, just remember that the direction of the incident rays is the direction of the positive x-axis, which means that in this particular picture, these distances are all negative. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention was the magnification. Well, the magnification is just the ratio of the image height to the object height. Which you can see from this first part here is also equal to the ratio of the image distance to the object distance. So if the image distance was say, you know, 1, di equals 1, and do is equal to 2, then the magnification m would be di, well really it's, it's hi over ho, which is equal to di over do, which in this case is equal to one half. So that would demagnify, would be reduced by the factor of a half. Now whether the image is inverted or not, you will know based on the sign of di. If di is positive, it would be a virtual image over here. So that's what you'd get if you were considering, say, a convex spherical mirror, which this works for. Um, yeah, I think that's all that I have to say about the, the lens equation. Uh, there are many problems that you can work with it, um, but they're all kind of of the same variety. And the only difficult thing is solving for uh, DI. Okay, uh, next time we'll move on to refraction, uh, which is the bending of light as it passes through an optical material like glass, from air to glass.